Hey folks and welcome to another Passion for Sound audio review. If you've watched my recent review of the AF100 from Audiofly, you already know that I'm a big fan of their products and the fact that they've got a very deliberate approach to their tuning. When Audiofly sent me the AF100, they also sent me the AF140 and the AF1120 for review. So today I'm looking at the AF140. This is the Mark II version, so all of their Pro range are now in their Mark II and that's brought about some changes in the tuning and also I believe in the cables. What's important though is that the tuning is new and therefore different. So any of you familiar with the old AF140s may find me talking about some different things in this review. Now first and foremost, the ergonomics of the Pro Series from Audiofly are all fantastic. They're this beautiful teardrop shaped IEM and they're extremely comfortable to wear, extremely easy to insert and very secure once they're in. Unlike the AF100, when you're buying the AF140s you're also getting a detachable MMCX style connection. Now in my mind MMCX is definitely the ideal connection style. It gives you easy rotation of the earpiece to help with fitting. Uh, it's also very secure and there are plenty of cable options out there that you can buy if you do wish to upgrade your cables. So it's really nice that Audiofly have used an MMCX connector there. You can always buy replacement and upgraded cables for these earphones. As you'd expect in the box you get a nice carry case, you get a range of tips including foam and silicon tips and obviously the cable that's attached to the earphones themselves. Other than that it's a fairly normal retail packaging and provision of, of accessories. So there's nothing specific to show you or talk about there. It's what you'd expect. Uh, it's all decent quality. So what's more important then is actually how well the earphones perform. For a price tag of around 300 Australian dollars or about 210 US dollars, the AF140s are sitting in that mid-range category that is fairly crowded. There's a, quite a few other options in that area. And in many ways, I think the deliberate tuning that Audiofly take is a great way of separating themselves from the rest of the market. Now I'm not suggesting that's why they've done this particular product in this particular way, but I think it's a nice benefit of the way they've been tuned. And the way they have been tuned is obviously no mistake because Audiofly's own marketing talks about this being an earphone for bass lovers. Now keeping in mind that Audiofly are quite focused on musicians using their products, this is very much an earphone designed for bass players, drummers, and anyone else that just generally likes bass. Having said that, they've got a different sound to the AF100s which were also quite warm and bass oriented. Because the AF140s are using a hybrid approach where they've got a single dynamic driver and then a pair of balanced armatures, they have a little bit more top end detail and sparkle than the AF100 but still very much a warm sound. The easiest way I can describe them, and this is going entirely from memory, so don't hold me too tightly to this, but they remind me of the old HD 650s from Sennheisers that I owned many, many years ago. And the reason they remind me of that is that they've got this very warm, relaxing and enjoyable tone. I would imagine if I was actually to have a pair of HD 650s here to try, that I think the AF140s have more bass quantity than the HD 650s, but the general style and tonality is that very relaxed, easy to listen to presentation, and it's very enjoyable, and you can wear these earphones for a long, long time without any sense of harshness or fatigue from the music, or for that matter, from the comfort, because they, as I said before, they're an incredibly comfortable earphone. So in terms of overall sound traits, the bass from the AF140s is strong, it's solid, it's probably a little bit slow, it's not the fastest bass I've ever heard, but it has this excellent body and warmth to it. The emphasis on the bass is probably sitting in the mid bands of the bass frequencies, and that does lend to a little bit of slowness to the sound, a little bit of extra fullness that is probably not entirely neutral and natural, but as I said before, very enjoyable and very relaxing to listen to. The balanced armatures in the earphones pick up the top end and give enough sparkle and enough detail to really offset the bass nicely and to provide a sense of focus and detail and imaging that's a step above and ahead of the AF100s with their single dynamic driver. So you're definitely getting what you're paying for, it's just a question of whether this is a sound signature that you're going to enjoy. While I was reviewing the AF140 Mark IIs, I was jumping between different IEMs to give myself a bit of a sense of the comparison. 
And some of the IEMs I used for that was the SimGot EN700 Pros that I've reviewed here on the channel, as well as the JVC Drop HAFDX1s, which I'll be reviewing soon. Now, all three of these have very different sounds. And what it showed me was that the AF140s are very much a deliberately colored and warmly tuned earphone that at first listen can sound a bit veiled. It can sound a little bit lacking in detail, but as you listen to it longer, as I said before, it's very relaxing, it's very enjoyable, and you don't feel like you're missing anything. And on the flip side of that, if I'd been listening to the AF140s and I then went to say the EN700s, I was finding they then sounded a little bit too forward in their upper mids and lower treble. Similarly, if I went to the JVCs, they then sounded very hollow and very lacking in bass quantity and even the lower mids felt a bit light and a bit thin. So what I'd say out of all of this is that the AF140s are very deliberately tuned to be warm and quite lush and quite mellow, but that's done in such a way, once again, like the AF100s, where it's highly enjoyable. You don't listen to it and think you're missing anything or feel like you wish there was more somewhere. It's just a sound you can really sink yourself into, relax and enjoy it. And that's why I drew the parallel with the HD650s at the very beginning in this review. One of the most impressive things about the AF140s for me is the quality of their soundstage and the focus of their image. Even though they are a bass oriented warm earphone, they provide a really sharp, clean sense of image and a relatively wide soundstage that's also got fairly good depth. They're not world beaters in terms of soundstage size and depth, but they're enjoyable. They don't feel claustrophobic as some warm and, and thicker earphones may. They do still produce a space around each individual sound, and the way the balanced armatures have been used and tuned allows you to get a really nice clarity and focus on each individual sound in the soundstage without it ever being pushed in your face like some brighter earphones can. I can imagine these are gonna be quite polarizing for some people. Some are going to put them on and think they're way too thick and they're way too warm. Others are gonna put them on and just love the fact that they've got this beautiful richness and fullness in the sound, but still excellent detail retrieval for a warm sounding earphone. So it's not one of those products that I can recommend hands down to anybody and everybody. It's a, a product that I would recommend to those looking specifically for a bass oriented earphone that's still got good detail and or to those people that are looking for a very relaxed and enjoyable sound where you can just put the earphones in, drift away, enjoy the music, and pop out three hours later with no fatigue and just pure enjoyment and pure relaxation. If that sounds like you and you're looking to buy a pair of AF140s, I popped an affiliate link in the description below. I should also let you know that I've got a bunch of reviews coming up on all sorts of things, including the SMSL SP200 amplifier, the JVC IEMs that I referred to before. I've got the Meta Empyrean headphones. So there's plenty of reviews coming. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, and obviously if you've enjoyed this, do hit the like button as well. And I'll look forward to seeing you here next time on Passion for Sound. Okay.